Let me tell you one secret. Majority of ethnic groups or geographical area or even some countries around the world didn't name themselves. For example, the word Europe came from the Phoenicians Europa. Yoruba is believed to come from the Shungais, Arabs or Aousas and similar case is the name Africa. It is difficult to agree on exactly how the names came about. So in this video, I am going to be examining the various theories that has been used to explain how the name Igbo came by. There was once a boy called Oluada Ekweano who was captured and sold into slavery from ancient Igbo land to the Caribbean. When he got freed, he moved to London. He got educated and wrote a book where he came to have come from a place called Esaka which scholars believe to be Iseke in Iya La local government area in present day Anambra state. He called his people Igbo. So, this Igbo is believed to have been later spelled as Igbo by the British. The problem with this theory is that Ikuyano referred to his village as being part of the Benin Kingdom, but there is no written aura or archaeological record to show that Isheke, which is near the border of Anambra and Imo states, was ever part of Benin. Onisha and other towns close to the Niger were at some time part of Benin Empire at the later peak, but never as far as the areas of Isheke. He also wrote in his book titled The Interesting Narrative Life of Olauda Ikuyano or Gustavus Vasa, the African, that some group of people called Oyeibo traded with his people on guns and gunpowder. What we don't know is why Ikuyano called Igbo's Igbo people. The name Igbo is traced to the 1700s and it has been spelled in various ways. One of his earliest spellings is Igbo. There are numerous claims that Igbos are one of the lost tribes of Israel who call themselves Igbo and therefore over time, these names have been corrupted and spelled in various ways which includes Igbo, Igbo, Igbo and to the present widely accepted spelling Igbo. Now, the problem with this theory is that the Hebrew as a term was no longer in use as a reference for the Jewish people in the 17th century. In the known world, if somehow the people who founded a Hebrew group left the Hebrew settlement, perhaps from Egypt, before Jews became the primary identifier of people from ancient Israel, they would more probably be known as the children of Jacob or Israel named after their forefather or children of God or Benjamin, their immediate forefather. Also, although people have pointed to similarities between Hebrew words and culture to that of the Israelites, if this theory is really true, they could have kept Hebrew language, their writing and more aspects of Hebrew culture. This is because there are many African tribes that have related pronunciation of some words with the Hebrew as well as culture and yet they don't claim to have Hebrew origin. Unlike the Yorubas, the Igalas and the Igbos have had contacts with each other long before known history. They also have borders on many fronts and there are indigenous Igala communities inside Igbo land and indigenous Igbo communities in Igala. According to one version of the founding of Igbo land, Eri, the progenitor of Indigo, married an Igala woman. The Inkuo, Eke, Afo, and Ore market in Igbo land are the same in Igala land. It is very possible that Indigo got a name from the Igalas. In Igala, the word Igbo means slave, and Unigo means slave people. Onigbo was what the Igalas were said to have called Igbos, which became their known name today. The con with this theory is that the Igala never enslaved the Igbos. The Anambra River Basin Igbos and the Unsuka Igbos never had any written or oral record to effect that they were afraid of Igala slave traders. The Nike people of Enugu and the Arus were the only group that had a wider reach in slave trades across Igbo land. 
the Igalas were not involved. The only probable reasons why the Igalas would have called the Igbo slaves is out of innermost malice. The word Igbo is a Yoruba word for bush or forest. This theory suggests that Igbo people were bush people and that when the white man came through the port in Lagos and asked them what the people in today's Igbo land were called and they gave them the derogative name Igbo. The pronunciation of Igbo as an ethnic group and Igbo as bush in Yoruba is not the same but as part time it could have been later corrupted to Igbo. It is not a strange thing for a different group to name another. It is argued that the Yorubas were named by the Aosa, sometimes from guys. Also, the word Europe is from Phoenician's word Europa, and it is also argued that Africa as a name originated from the Greek or Roman. The problem with this theory is that there is little evidence in history to show that the Yorubas and the Igbos have had contacts before the name Igbo was standardized. Bishop Ajayi Crowder, who rose to become the first black bishop on earth, was Yoruba. He was in Igbo land with the CMS in 1857. By this time, Igbo was already a well-known name for the ethnic group. The Portuguese and the British, who made contact with Igbos during the transatlantic slave trade, which was abolished in 1808, were a group who had the confidence the printers and the rich to name a group and have it stick. And there was no time the Yoruba were a middle contact between Igbo slave traders and the British or Portuguese. The word Igbo is the Igbo term for ancient. The Igbo is what you would call ancient people. It could be that this went on to become Indigo people and then shortened to Igbo. But why would Igbos refer to themselves as the ancient? Slave trade is a possible answer. In the years before colonialism, Igbo today was not a single tribe. It was usually village by village or clan by clan identity. You are an Aru man or an Enri man or an Unsuka man in those days. All it takes is for one slave man from a clan who didn't understand the question of identity to use Undigbo to refer to the collective Igbo people and it could stick. The problem with this theory is that between a slave and his master, what's power to become eternal and ethnically encompassing was grossly limited. The only way Undigo could have stood is through some stronger means. This is a rather weak theory. There are other theories of how the Igbos got their name. There are even people who suggest that the name was gifted to them from as far as Sudan.